Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 7, if you would stand for the reading. The parable of the lost sheep. Now all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him, that the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, saying, What man among you, having a hundred sheep, and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he was found, he places it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Then when he, excuse me, then when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Likewise, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous men who need no repentance. The word of God for the people of God.
<coughs> he said it didn't take very long for four floors of seminary students in a dorm to find out that on floor number three there was TV and coffee. And so his room was hardly ever private. One day, listening to the news, he heard the local anchors say that in a particular part of the city of Baltimore, this certain neighborhood, it was notorious for racial tension and for violence. And uh, the first responders in the community, the police and the firefighters and the emergency medical technicians, they uh, responded slower to that sector than any other of the more secure areas in the city. Well, later that day, I mean, this got the attention of somebody who was going to be a bishop and who cared about ministry and cared about people. And so he convinced a buddy of his to jump the car with him and they were to go check out the area. And they did that. And they stayed throughout the rest of the day and they waited just a little bit too long. You have to get the picture. This is the late 60s we're talking about. Racial tension, Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy. I mean, all of that going on. And in Baltimore, racial tensions just absolutely boiling over. He and his buddy lingered too long there, and these two young white men found themselves after sundown not recognizing any thing that they had seen coming into the city, which means that they were lost in the city, and it was late. Well, the eventual bishop was bright enough to recall that even in Baltimore, the sun sets in the west. And so they decided, because they knew they came in towards the east from the west, that heading west was a good idea. But he also figured out that if he just kept the car moving, then nobody could stop them and, and do violence to them. Well, just about the time that all of this dawned on him, the light at the next corner turned red. And they had to stop. And worse, it was in front of a bar. And outside the bar, milling around, were at least 18 million young black men having a great time, pushing each other around and smiling and laughing and drinking and staggering. And when these two white young seminary students with an out-of-state tag pulled up in front of that bar and stopped for the red light, they looked at them, they gathered around the car, they circled the car, they closed in on the car, they were menacing in their appearance. It was a frightening, frightening experience. Just then, the bishop, who was not bishop then, but with the obvious interpersonal skills and quick thinking of a future Methodist bishop, turned to his buddy in the passenger seat and said to him, hey, hop out and ask these our new best friends how we can get out of the city. And his buddy said back, well, never mind what that man said back to him. <laughs> bishop Leland, our bishop, when he was that young, may have at that moment performed an illegal launch through that intersection against a red light. But they lived to tell the story. There are three words that circle through these three parables of which Debbie read the first one. There are the lost, there are the searching, and there are the found. Say that with me. The lost, the searching, searching and the found. found. Lost, lost, searching, found. found. Reflecting on the story, Bishop Leland told us preachers that gathered last Thursday that just like the lost sheep in Jesus' story, Paul Leland was also lost in Baltimore. And it occurred to him that lost things and lost people still have value. For instance, even in that setting, he was a husband, he was a father to three young children, and he was a Methodist pastor in a little church while he was going through seminary. But none of that mattered when surrounded by, confronted by a mob. 
that wanted to do some violence, either to your vehicle or to you or to both. Applying that to the objects of the story in the Bible, what good is a sheep that is lost in terms of providing wool for <coughs> its master? What good is a coin? What value does a coin have? Does a coin have value? Sure. It's 25 cents, it's a dime, it's a dollar, it's a $20 gold piece. What value, though, does it have if it's lost, if it's fallen between the cracks of the floorboards and you can't find it, what value is it to you? It still has intrinsic value, but will there be any food or olive oil bought to feed the household? And in the case of the prodigal son, what value he has as a human being is still intrinsic to him. But of what value is the relationship to his father at that point when he is lost? You see, the word lost has many different meanings. But in the parable, the word lost really means out of place. <clears throat> Paul Leland was lost in the city of Baltimore, like the lost sheep in Jesus' story. He was out of place where he should not have been. Like the lost coin below the floorboards, lost and out of place. And that's the whole point of a missional mindset of a church. Lost must be found. Lost is out of place until it is found. People who are lost, out of place, cannot function as they were created. As the sheep was created to bring wool and meat and comfort to the master. As a vine is to provide fruit for the people who enjoy that fruit. A human is to engage. We are created to engage in relationship with each other, but also with our creator. And when we are lost, we need to be found so that we can put that intrinsic value of who we are in its right place. Better still, so that God can put it in its right place. Our baptism is a mark of the redeemed. It's the lost and out of place being found and restored to the place that God has created us for, the place of God's embrace and God's love. And we must never lose sight or hope of being the locators and lovers of the lost. This is Zach. He has to be introduced to you, right? <laughs> we, uh, we celebrate this as an official act. Uh, and it is, it's somber in a way, but it's also one of the most joyful things. If you remember the parable, remember what was said, that when the man found the sheep, what did he do? He rejoiced. When he got home, he called all his friends together and said, let's have a party. For I found what was lost. That's the same essence of what we do here this morning. Uh, Zach, in surrendering his life to Christ, has uh, been found of the Father, and such as any of us who have, at the same, at the same point, given our hearts to Christ, <coughs> because we know that He is the Savior, He died for us. And so, Zach, we come to this uh, respectfully, out of what God has commanded, but also joyfully. We're, we, as the church, couldn't be happier for you. We couldn't be more tickled if that you have decided to, uh, to throw your lot in with Christ and to have him bless your life and, and be that Lord to you. So uh, let me invite you all to take your bulletin and let's share together. And uh, Zach has all the questions memorized here so he doesn't need one of these bulletins. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant, declare that our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing in us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. David is going to present Zach for baptism. Baptism and forgiveness. Thank you, David. 
Zach, these questions are asked on behalf of the whole church. I ask you, Zachary, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? We also ask of ourselves to respond in like manner. Do you, as Christ's body the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Zachary now before you in your care? God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Zachary with the community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in service to others. We will pray for him that he may grow to be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Did you hear those promises? All of us just made. Uh, it's not just because we love you because you're a big guy and you beat us up. If we didn't. It's not because you're so handsome we just can't help ourselves. Even though all those things are true. Those promises are there because of our faith in Christ and your faith in Christ. We are one. So, let us join together, all of us, in professing the Christian faith that is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son, our Lord. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. We give thanksgiving over the water. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through the water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Thank you, Lord, all the earth. God's mercy be shed. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by the Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. He declared his words to nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water. And Zachary, as he receives it, to wash away his sin, clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in Christ's final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is with you and the Holy Spirit, who lives and reigns forever. As a symbol, <clears throat> baptism is a submission act. It's an act of submitting oneself to God. And in Christian baptism, it is a public declaration. Christ is the one I follow. Zach has chosen, we, we couldn't quite get to the pond today, and so we've chosen to go halfway there. Instead of standing as baptismal candidates normally do, Zach is going to He's going to kneel as an act of submission. You know, on your knees is what it's, it's a symbol of prayer, but it's a symbol of, of opening up your life to God from a position of weakness. Indeed, Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong. So we are never stronger than when we're on our, knee, on our knees. So I'm going to ask, first of all, Zach, if you would kneel, and I'm going to ask 
ask you to stand in honor of this act of submission. Zachary, because of your commitment and your statement of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Yes. Yeah. 